A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, too, had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them, step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a, a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I, I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. <clears throat> but I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time a voice from heaven answered, What God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then, three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent from me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. Verbum Domini <clears throat> A thirst is my soul for the living God. <clears throat> As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? <clears throat> Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to, to your dwelling place. <clears throat> then will I go to the, then will I go in to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God.
Dominus vobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Red room domini. When we, um, uh, some of us out there who watch cartoons or have watched watch cartoons or, or movies where there is um, an obvious good guy and a bad guy, you know, we, we, we often will look at the, at the good guy because the good guy brings about justice. You know, the good guy is, does not want to hurt people but goes out and tries to save life and serve and protect. Whereas the villain, the villain, you know, only wants to bring about destruction. You know, he's not really interested in helping people, but only helping himself. And he will do whatever he has to do to get what he wants. So kill, slaughter, pillage, whatever it is, he will do it. And today we hear again about the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He is the one we model our lives after. He is the one who is open. He is the gate to whom we enter. And in him, we find life. And as he tells us, life more abundantly because it is his own life he shares with us, his divine life and his divine love. But then there's also this little villain out there, and his name is Satan. And he's the exact opposite of the Good Shepherd. He comes, as it says here in the scriptures, he comes to steal, slaughter, and destroy. He's out for our souls. And Jesus tells us in another chapter, chapter 8, that he is a liar and the father of lies. Well, you know, we, we look at these, these two. We have Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and God, we see only goodness coming from out of him, love, truth, mercy. And the devil, we see only hatred, pride, you know, someone who kills, who slaughters, who destroys. But which one do we really follow? Whom do we strive to imitate? And, you know, the devil, when we think about Satan, he's usually somebody who 
the movies and books portray as someone scary looking, someone really mean, so, you know, someone with, with horns and a pitchfork. But he doesn't come to us in that way. Remember, he's the father of lies. If he came to us scaring us like a ghost, like a big monster, then he'd scare us into church. And he's smart. You know, he's, he is intelligent. Even though he's a fool for trying to destroy God, but he is smart. And he's a great manipulator. The father of lies, remember that. So he doesn't come scaring us. He comes manipulating, deceiving us, persuading us away from the truth. And the scriptures tell us today that he has, that, that there are these thieves and robbers. These thieves and robbers are the false prophets or false teachers. They come with a message that turns us away from God, a message that is comforting, overly comforting, that is pleasurable, that says it's okay to do wrong. You know, it tries to justify the wrong. Or at the same time, it tries to inflate the ego, tries to build up our pride, or take us on a quest for power. And how do we know this is wrong? Well, as I said, in the ego. You know, we, Satan wants to build us up so much that he doesn't want us to think about it. He wants, to think, he wants us to forget about the ways of God. See, when life then becomes all about ourselves and fulfilling our own needs and doing whatever we want, whatever is pleasurable to us, using our talents, our gifts, our treasures, so that we can get what we want, then, you know, we're not, we're not living for others. We're not living for God. We're following the ways of the devil. Because then it, it becomes about, well, who will I step on next? Well, I don't, I don't care who I damage. You know, if I have to lie, I will get what I want. You know? And eventually, if, if it gets so bad, even if I have to kill, that is the way of Satan. See, and in the way of Satan it's, itself is that he's always trying to hide us from the truth. And the truth about ourselves. You know, any, you do anything, you know, a puff of our imagination, you know, make us think we're something we're not, make us even want to become something we're not, or some, someone who we were never made to become. Now, the truth about ourselves, it hurts. You know, sometimes there there is wounds there with that. You know, they go way, way back in our lives. You know, we have to recognize this truth, but, but it hurts to bring it up. But remember the words of Jesus Christ. The truth will set us free. Yes, it hurts. But then we look to him. To Jesus Christ who suffered and died for love of us and was raised up again see this is our inspiration this is part of the reason why he suffered and dies so that he can he can show us so much compassion so much love in our own suffering so that we can have we can be strengthened and encouraged that our God suffers like us and that he's so merciful in our suffering, and that he suffers like us, comes down where we are to raise us up with himself. This is powerful. This is true love here. And so we have to do our best to, to not follow the ways of Satan. They're deceiving. They're manipulating. They come when we are not even expecting it. And maybe we are, we, we are kind of in some of these ways, you know, where, where, where we deceive, manipulate, kill, slaughter, destroy, maybe not in a literal sense, but maybe we do that to people by the way we talk, by the way we act, by constantly belittling others, by destroying their reputation with gossip and slander and things like that. You know, that, that's the ways of the devil. 
But now we look to the ways of Jesus Christ the Lord, the humble one. He calls himself a shepherd because he's humble and he's charitable. But those who who are around him at this time, they cannot see this. They are blinded to it. And, you know, the shepherds at this time, they were often despised, looked down upon. They were the little ones. They were, they were the lower class. You know, shepherds, uh, they weren't very clean people. They were often dirty and very sloppy, and they smelled like the sheep. So when, they would, when people would see the shepherds, they, they'd walk away from them. You know, they, they, like I said, they, they looked down on them. They were always, they were always the inferior ones. And Jesus is calling himself a shepherd because he's truly humble. He's truly charitable. And a shepherd, we look at the ways, the actions of a shepherd. What does the shepherd do for the sheep? The shepherd is always with the sheep. The shepherd cares for the sheep. The shepherd is always watching over the sheep. The shepherd feeds the sheep. He clothes the sheep. You know, does, does all these, everything necessary to preserve the life of the sheep, to protect the, the lives of the sheep. And then when one goes astray, he goes out and finds the sheep. And if he is hurt, he puts the sheep on his shoulders and carries them back to the sheepfold. See, this is, this is exactly what Jesus is, does for us. He does all of that. He loves us so much. And then he says that he's even willing, that, and, and he does, he lays down his life for all of us. Lays it because he loves us so much that he gives his life for all of us. Suffers and dies for love of us. Not many shepherds would probably perhaps suffer and die for the sheep, especially one, but Jesus would do it for one. He's our God. He is our creator. He made us. We belong to him. And so this, this, that's what he does. So we look at the ways of Jesus Christ. This is, is how we model ourselves by the goodness, the charity, the humility of Jesus Christ. And if we want to, you know, one way to, to defeat, and, and probably one of the most powerful ways to defeat Satan, the evil one, is to follow the ways of Jesus especially his humility and his charity that will scare the devil. He's opposed to those who are humble, those who are charitable. Remember, in, in humility, there is truth. You know, the, the devil doesn't want to, us to know the truth about ourselves. He's a liar again. And charity, those who give, you know, for love of others those who, who, who take the responsibility seriously, who do not neglect, you know, who, who strive to, to give to others, to look at the, at, at the interest of others, to give to, to those, to try to build them up, you know, to encourage. You know, this, this, is, this is Jesus here. Charity, humility and charity. And so, my brothers and sisters, we again look and model, strive to model our lives by Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who is always giving to us. And even still, you know, through the sacraments, through the good things He gives us in nature and all of this, you know, we, we look at His goodness always. And we do our best to imitate this goodness and pray. Pray that we can grow in the likeness and the ways of Jesus Christ. And pray that, that we could that we'd always be always be able to discern between right and wrong, between what is good, what, what Jesus would want us to do, what God's will is. Pray for this always, and God will always answer our prayers. Because then, in this type of prayer, what are we doing? We are showing humility. We are coming to God and says, God, I need you. I can only do anything and everything with you. God bless you all.